I was a real goody two shoes at school. I wanted to please my teachers. I wanted to work hard. I always did my homework. Didn't always enjoy that, but I did it. I didn't want to get in trouble. In fact, only once throughout the entire of primary school and secondary school did I ever get any form of detention. That's not even just enough school detention, that's staying behind at lunch or break time uh, to write lines or do extra work. That was when I was in year five. So that's probably about 35 years ago now. And I had to write out lines for a book called New Worlds to Conquer. Now, it wasn't a big thing, I just missed a bit of lunchtime. So why did it stick with me? Why have I vividly got this image of the exact situation that happened and the fact that I had to sit in that classroom writing out those lines? Well, let me tell you. It happened on a morning. Me and a few friends were in the classroom before the teacher arrived and we got someone's pencil case. And the four of us were throwing it between us, keeping it out of reach of this other one. It was a bit of what we thought was innocent fun. The teacher walked in. At that moment where I was holding the pencil case in my hand, had it behind my head, and I let go and threw it across the classroom. I was caught red-handed. I was guilty. There's no doubt about it. And I got the punishment. I got to come back at lunchtime and write out lines from New Worlds to Conquer. So if I was guilty, why did that memory stick? Well, it sticks because my three friends got off. I was sat there at lunchtime writing out lines whilst they were outside playing football. I got in trouble whilst they went free. I was incensed because justice was not done. Yes, justice was done for me. I was guilty. I deserve punishment. But it wasn't done for my friends because they were also guilty and they got nothing. And I think that speaks into all of us. I think we all want justice. When we see someone doing something wrong, particularly at school, we want to get punished. We want the punishment to follow the crime. And that's what our country works and that's how order is kept. There's crimes and punishments. We all want justice. Or do we? Because actually when we stop and think, We've got a God who made us and made everything. And yet we've turned away and rejected him. We've turned away and said, I want to live my own life. I don't want God in charge. I want to be in charge. And actually if we do that, there are going to be consequences that follow. That's not a justice we want. So how do we get around that? How do we work that out? Because there's nothing in me that says I want to live God's way. There's nothing in me that can make up for what I've done wrong. Well, that's what our passage tonight talks about. We're not going to be told because it's quite a long passage, but it's in Luke chapter 23 and verses 1 to 25 if you want to read. And it's set in a courtroom. It's a courtroom with two people who come and stand before the judge. Accusations are brought and it's decided whether they're innocent or guilty, and then what the outcome is. Well, let's meet our first person. That's Jesus. He is brought before the judge. He is brought before a person called Pilate, a Roman authority at the time. And some accusations made. There are people from the Jews who want to kill Jesus, as they've made up some facts. They accuse him of undermining the Jewish nation, of undermining the payment of taxes to Caesar, of Jesus claiming to be the Messiah, to be God's chosen king and rescuer, and that through that he was going to be destroying the Roman nation. Well, Pilate investigates these claims, and Jesus is declared innocent. Well, the people who want to kill Jesus, who want Jesus dead, don't give up there, and they make up some more claims. They say, hang on, no, he's also been stirring people up to riot. He's been getting people to riot. Well, again, Pilate looks into these claims 
and Jesus once again is declared innocent. Well, the next accusation, well, actually, there isn't one. The people have no more accusations to bring, but they still want Jesus dead. So they just shout louder and louder, kill him, kill him, kill him. Pilate again looks and he says, there's still no evidence. Jesus is still innocent. But the crowd shout even louder, kill him, crucify him, kill him. There is no basis to their accusations. And once again, Pilate turns around and says, No, Jesus is innocent. The outcome for Jesus, because of the crowd's response, because Pilate fears them rising up, is Jesus is said to be crucified. An innocent man is sent to his death. Our second character, the second person we come across, is called Barabbas. Now he is accused of a very similar thing to Jesus. He's accused of what's called insurrection, so that's a violent uprising causing a violent riot and murder. These are serious crimes. And do you know what? Barabbas is guilty. We don't need a second or third or fourth accusation. He is guilty as charged. He is not a nice person. He is in fact one of the worst criminals that could be described. And this happens at the time of a Jewish festival where the Roman authorities grant that one person might go free. And the crowd are given the choice. Jesus, innocent. Barabbas, guilty. And the crowd say, we want Barabbas to go free. And so Barabbas is set free. Jesus sent the cross. Barabbas goes free. And we look at it and goes, it's not fair. That's not right. And it's not fair and it's not right. But it's also wonderful news. Because this isn't just a picture of a courtroom and a weird festival where one person goes free. This is the picture of the cross. This is the justice that happens on the cross. You see, Jesus was entirely innocent. Jesus didn't deserve to die. Jesus didn't deserve God's anger. And yet he willingly chose to go to the cross and die. Why? Well, it goes that, back to that problem we had earlier that we face God's anger and there's nothing we can do about it. Barabbas was the worst sort of person you can think about. But the problem is we are all like Barabbas. We might not have done these horrible things, but we've all rejected God's good rule. And so we face God's right anger. And there is no way we can solve that. But Jesus could and Jesus did. When Jesus died on the cross, he died, the innocent one died, so the guilty ones, us, can go free. If we trust in Jesus, if we say, God, I realise I've rejected you, I realise I've lived, tried to make myself ruler of my life, I'm sorry. Thank you that Jesus took my punishment. Please forgive me. We will be forgiven and we will have life forever with God. The question for us, I guess, is how are we dealing with that justice? Do we see that we've done wrong? And if so, are we trying to stand on our own terms, on our own feet? Are we trying to stand in how good we can be or the things we've done? Because if so, actually there's no hope for us. Or do we see the justice of the cross? Do we see that we are guilty? But that we can go free because Jesus died. Because we trust in Jesus, we can go free and have life, have life to the full now and forever. 
Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you showed us this justice, this justice of the cross, where the innocent died, so the guilty may go free. Thank you for that mean, what that means for us. And we pray that we would know that as guilty we can go free because Jesus took that guilt and gave us his innocence. We pray that we would rejoice in that, know that, and long for life with you now and forever. Amen. Do come back again next week uh, as we'll see the next part of Jesus' amazing story.